Hello students, welcome back to another lecture on classical mechanics and uh, today we are having the lecture number 5a and in the last class especially we have seen what is meant by a configuration space and then a small distinction between the configuration space and phase space that's what we have seen in the last class and especially the important point to be remembered is phase space means even dimensional because it is two times the number of degrees of freedom so for the configuration phase it need not be even dimensional both of them both odd and even are acceptable so that is what is the main conclusion that you have and in addition to that the important point that we have learned in the last class is that how to calculate the number of degrees of freedom for a single particle a systems of particles or a rigid body or if you are going to have a multiple rigid bodies then we say kinematic links or kinematic pairs okay you are going to join one or more or we can say two or more okay two or more rigid bodies when you are going to connect them that connection is what we say a kinematic pair or we can say that link kinematic link and in this particular situation uh, the calculation of the degrees of freedom has to be uh, done carefully you cannot use the standard uh, way of writing down like uh, 3n minus k 3n minus k is applicable only for uh, collection of particles that are not interconnected but if you are going to consider rigid bodies that are connected then 3n minus k cannot be applied so that point you note down we have seen in fact the examples in the last class so keep that point in our mind and then we are now today we are planning to move ahead and then we would like to uh, address an important uh, point uh, like how q and q dot will be independent of each other because generally we say uh, q and q dot how can they be independent if q is there you take time derivative you got q dot right so how can you say q dot and q are independent of each other so that is one doubt that uh, generally people get so we will see how to clarify that concept and in addition we are going to learn an important thing namely the principle of virtual work so principle of virtual work is something uh, uh, that is important in the sense that it is easy to uh, apply it to a system in equilibrium or uh, to a system uh, in dynamic equilibrium in both the cases you can apply so we will see little more detail uh, uh, how to, in order to understand the principle of virtual work first we need to understand what do you mean by virtual so we will see those details in the today's class so that is the objective of the today's class okay okay here today is uh, lecture number i have sh uh, shown 5a here and what what is the main objective of the today's class will be that uh, after making some clarification between q and q dot whether they are uh, independent of each other okay or that they are uh, dependent how do you understand that they are dependent or independent of each other so that is one question or one doubt that generally everyone gets so we'll clarify on that and after that we will move on to an important topic what is known as virtual work so that that is the today's aim and for that let us let me move further and show what kind of doubt one gets here so the, the the doubt or the question that a particular individual gets is like this q means what is meant by q is the location of the particle so if it is on the x axis we can say x not x comma y x comma z or x comma y comma z okay those things are depending upon the three dimensional space in the simplest case at least x not is clear on a one dimensional case that is the meaning of q and q dot means time derivative so d by dt of uh this x not but however the point to be noted is even though that is the meaning okay it mean it means that you are actually differentiating there is an interesting point that we have to uh, remember that we are not differentiating the location or the coordinate that is what you have to understand suppose if the uh, on the x axis if 3 cm location it is uh, the particle is located we are not differentiating 3 cm that that is where the difference slightly comes into picture and you have to uh, carefully uh, think about that d by dt of 3 cm are we doing that means no no we are not doing that so we are not differentiating the 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 value of the location so then what is that this time derivative is that 
at that location when the particle is uh, moving then when it is crossing the location x not what will be its velocity so that is how you understand the d by dt of the position so th this this understanding you compare with another uh, statement saying that okay if the if the particle is located at the location 3 cm along the x axis then i am talking about time derivative of 3 cm then it is wrong we are not differentiating 3 cm with respect to time so that is one uh, place where the difference has to be uh, kept in mind the reason is why this is important is uh, sometimes confusion comes whether zero is the result or zero is not the result i'll i'll explain that now see where the confusion comes is like this if q equal to zero q equal to zero means what okay let us say that the particle is located at the origin zero means origin that's what i mean to say so if the particle is located at the origin then q dot q dot means time derivative can you say that zero always because mathematically what you do differentiate zero if i differentiate zero with respect to time i'll get once again zero right so the question this is what i'm writing question one here what is the question is if the particle is located at the origin can you say that the speed of the particle is zero always because time derivative of zero is zero so this is one doubt this is where you have to think and you are going to see the contradictory answer so that is why uh, this is one example the point that i am going to illustrate here is that even though the particle is located at the origin origin of the coordinate system then q dot need not be zero that is so these two are contradictory so either you say that q dot is always zero the always word you have to see here not necessarily so not equal to zero is also possible zero is also possible that is the meaning we are not rejecting zero zero is possible but remember not equal to zero is also possible so we can't say that always here so that is the point but however in order to uh, get this particular point a uh, little more uh, comfortably we will consider an example then we will come back to this point i'd like to uh, show an example and then uh, see how this is possible so the result i am written here result means uh, do you want what do you want to say about the question one means question one is wrong that is uh, q dot is equal to zero always that statement is wrong that's what i am i have written here and this particular statement is true because not equal to zero is possible it is that means zero is also possible okay let us see one one example two examples i want to see so that this point will be clear okay so here what you do is uh, we are going to consider uh, a bird that is going to fly but right now it is at uh, sitting at a particular location right so that location you consider as the origin so here no, the, the the place where it is sitting right now that point you consider as the 0 comma 0 comma 0 in three dimension so if you consider like that that is the location okay then there are two options are there the bird can fly for example now i will show here it goes to a different place and then it will return back so you see here this particular bird goes here and stays here for some time so, th so the, you can continue to see that it is staying for a long time here see it is staying there and after staying here and then it will return back to its original origin so the point to be noted here is that this particular uh, uh, this particular flies speed will be zero so it is at a particular instant of uh, time but if it if you allow to dynamics to take place you can see that the speed is zero and again it will come back so this is one example second example is very uh, common example which you already know which is the uh, harmonic oscillator uh, this particular oscillator i am showing in the y direction it is oscillating vertically up and down but you can also consider horizontal horizontal oscillator also you can consider both of them are okay now what is the point to be noted is that you see here so now when it is going to the extreme end now it is stationary for some time that means momentarily for a small time it is uh, at rest and then returning back returning back means its speed is getting reversed isn't it so now you can see then again it stops you see that this is the place where there is a momentarily momentarily means temporarily for a small fraction of time uh, this stops and then returns back now the point is that the point very important point is you have to tell where are the locations where the velocities are zero so you see that that is a place where velocity is zero 
then down here again velocity is zero so these are the two places where q dot is zero so i am talking about q dot so q dot is zero that is okay now which point is the best example to say that velocity is not equal to zero so that particular place will be the middle point middle point means let us see the middle point here yeah that is the middle point so when it is traveling from the maximum height to minimum height the center point is there right so at that place the the oscillator is executing at its maximum speed so certainly zero speed is not at all possible so now we have identified three places we have identified three places two places where q dot is zero and one place where q dot is not equal to zero so is this point clear so right now it is a center so where q dot is not going to be zero okay so once this particular these two examples are uh, clear to you we will go back to our original i think we will go back to our original board and then we will see whether you are able to understand the statements that are written there okay so based on the harmonic oscillator i have written here what is the conclusion that here the meaning comes if q equal to 0 q equal to 0 means uh, you have to understand what do you mean by q equal to 0 q equal to 0 is the equilibrium position that is the center position so when it is neither at its maximum height nor at its minimum height that is in the middle position that place is what we fix the origin of the coordinate system and therefore q equal to 0 now at that place q dot is not equal to 0 and similarly you come to the minima and the maxima position either at its maximum height or at the minimum height that is the place where q is not equal to 0 because you came out of origin right once you are away from origin q is not equal to 0 but at those extreme top and bottom uh, the particle takes momentary rest and then returns back its path and therefore q dot will be 0 at that instant of time there is a very small time q dot will be 0 so the point is that q equal to 0 means q dot q dot may not be zero this is point number one and the other way is also possible if q is not equal to zero q dot is zero is possible so ultimately what do you want to tell okay based on all these arguments what is our conclusion means uh, now that the conclusion should be clear our conclusion is we have one q we have one q dot these two things are independent so don't say that okay i will take time derivative of position and make zero it's not like that so whether q or q dot these two are independent of each other so they will take their own values okay that point i will write down here whatever uh, statement that i am making a conclusion so this is one important uh, uh, place where many many of the students ask the doubt so this point would be i think reasonably helpful and uh, now that the conclusion is that here i am writing down the conclusion the q and q dot these two things are independent so uh, based on the q value alone don't decide anything about q dot that is our conclusion that's all so this is one important conclusion okay so that's over so next thing is that we are now ready to move ahead to uh, uh, today's important concept namely the the virtual work so in order to understand the virtual work some terminologies are required so that's what i'm writing here virtual displacement we are going to give the uh, symbol here delta so a symbol small delta will be used here instead of d so i will explain uh, how different it is that okay the standard di differential you already know dw dr dq dx dy so these are the things uh, coming with the letter d but here you have delta r delta theta delta w delta x like that you will be using whenever the word virtual comes into picture so okay so if it is the case how will you write for virtual means delta w so this these are the uh, two things that are uh, important so this is the uh, uh, what do you call the notation that we are going to use now whenever we are going to discuss about the virtual work concept it's also going to be extended to what is known as the dlm but principle so these two things are related principle of virtual work and the dlm but principle are related and they all uh, we are going to talk about uh, when the system is in equilibrium that's why i am writing this particular statement 
either it can be in static equilibrium or it has to be in dynamic equilibrium so th only then we are going to apply the principle of virtual work or the d lambert's principle so there are these two are two different things one for static case another for dynamic case both of them are not same okay principle of virtual work means apply to statics d lambert's principle means apply to dynamic equilibrium okay not static equilibrium static equilibrium means principle of virtual work dynamic equilibrium means d lambert's principle so these two things are very similar and we are going to apply one for the statics and one for the dynamics so that is the starting point and therefore you have to uh, catch hold of the word equilibrium system it can be static equilibrium system or it can be a dynamic equilibrium system okay so now for that uh, let us i would like to show an example but before that let me write down how do you write the the usual displacement with the d symbol so dr is quite traditional of course you already know that so real displacement real work anything that is real you simply write with the d that's all and of course you already know that work is a scalar that is the reason yeah here is one uh, one example where i would like to show uh, why the reason or why do you want to use the word virtual okay let me show go to the full screen now yeah it's a full screen so now you can see whether equilibrium what what kind of equilibrium it is there so the first case what i am showing currently in this uh, tug of war now this is the case where you don't have equilibrium okay so once again probably i'll uh, show this uh, yeah so this is the situation where equilibrium is not there so once again i'll show this this is not equilibrium okay and this is not dynamic equilibrium also both of them are not there so this is uh, not in proper equilibrium so we we cannot apply uh, any kind of principle of virtual work here in this case so we need a better uh, equilibrium system so we will consider another situation so this is something uh, which is near to equilibrium so let us see that both of them are equally uh, strong and therefore when they when they hold it like this you see that there is no big movement in any one side so we, what what i'm trying to say is that one group force is equal to the second group force that is a total force applied by the set of all people so in this case what happens is this is a situation for an equilibrium and here there is the, there are two important points to be noted one is the force which are applied by the system that means here directly a person is pulling and that is a direct force we are going to classify this that's why i'm explaining there are we have to separate two types of forces in this case one is the applied force so applied force means what people are holding the rope and pulling okay that is applied one but there is one more force which is not visible to you that is very important what force is not visible you see so when when the equilibrium is there so this this is once again repeating actually yeah so when now the, when the equilibrium is there yeah so no, right now there is an equilibrium when the equilibrium is there what force is not visible that's what you have to think there is a force in the rope inside the rope you have a force and we are going to call by the name tension tension in the string tension in the thread tension in the rope there is a word that you you are quite familiar and that tension is not visible what is visible is only people are pulling and that is the applied force so one force is applied there is another force that is not visible and that is that particular force is inside the rope or thread and we are going to call that by another name called constraint force so remember constraint force okay so okay keep these two names and okay now we will come back to our uh, original discussion okay so the point that i am trying to say is that we have to remember the names two names are there one is called applied force the other one is called constraint force okay so let us consider the first one virtual displacement i will go down and then write down about the virtual displacement what is virtual i'll explain now here whatever uh, whatever movement that you are going to see anything that you are going to see is real right if somebody is moving a little bit that is a real displacement you can always measure 1 mm 2 mm if it is small anything any anything small you can measure right at least 1 micrometer also you can measure 
so everything is real why do you want to use the word virtual that is very important what is virtual here so here the virtual is in a sense of imagination so for that how do you put mathematically okay it's imagination it's fine but you have to talk in mathematics right how how do you explain it in mathematics is that the distance moved by a particle in a time interval delta t equal to 0 this is very important see time interval delta t equal to 0 is the criterion for the word virtual otherwise you cannot use the word virtual virtual means what means you don't allow any time say you, you are going to freeze the time so this is a, uh, something that you have to think carefully freezing time is not simple freezing time means what you don't allow any time 1 millisecond no i will not allow 1 millisecond 1 microsecond no i will not allow any time but you have to move a particular object from one place to another okay see, the, see this is the point that i am i am talking about see if you are going to consider a particular object like this okay and if if this particular object has to move like this if you want to move little bit if you want to move this little bit you need a little time right if no time is given how can i move this so that is the place where the word virtual comes now virtual means we are going to freeze the time that means i will not allow any time in that situation any movement that you are going to perform is called virtual displacement that is a meaning but we will understand this little further that this is a mathematical concept concept of mathematical so okay that is why the confusion comes in reality the object is not moving so how do you understand this so to understand let us make certain thing clear i'll write down that yeah here what do you what do you understand here delta t equal to zero means what i am freezing the time freezing the time is not easy you have to think i have a i have a clock okay whether it is analog clock or digital clock wall clock anything is okay you can stop a clock by removing the battery if you remove the battery then the clock is not going to run but that doesn't the but that is not the meaning for delta t equal to zero you can only stop the clock not the time we are not talking about clock here we are talking about time delta t means time difference so to understand this better how do you measure time is time measurement is based on the earth rotation so if you if you really want to freeze the time then you have to stop the rotation of the earth that is not possible right so now you understand that delta t equal to 0 is something that is not possible something that is not realistic you can't do it so now you now you are able to understand that if such a thing happens so if such a thing happen means what you have to use your imagination power or we say mathematically mathematically we say that okay an object has moved but since we are not going to allow any time we consider that particular distance will be virtual displacement okay so any movement displacement is movement so any movement that is going to happen of course they are all very small very remember infinitesimal displacement okay nothing like 1 meter 1 meter and all no uh, no place for here so infinitesimal dis, uh, displace infinitesimal means any number that is approaching zero 1 micrometer 1 millimeter this kind of numbers are only allowed even for calculation okay it's a mathematical calculation so no problem but not real not not the real thing real thing means really the object is not moving okay object is not really moving but we will be doing a mathematical calculation by making an assumption as if it is moving that as if it is moving is what we are going to say delta t equal to 0 okay hopefully the word virtual will be clear because of this reason so now we will uh, move ahead and then understand what is the meaning of the corresponding virtual work here so you can understand that uh, one thing is not possible and the other thing is possible so that's why i am putting a tick here so so this is the meaningful if it is possible but this is the meaningless so what i mean by putting a, a into mark here is this is a meaningless one okay you should not say that okay i stopped the clock here there is no meaning this is meaningful but not realistic we can't do it okay fine so if that is the situation so the next thing is that we will try to understand how do you understand the virtual work now so whatever i explained uh, let me write down in a simple sentence and then that's all about it
and we will talk about the difference between the real work and the virtual work these things are of course quite familiar to you so you can go quickly uh, f dot the force dot displacement is the work so now you see uh, whether it is real or uh, virtual real work is quite trivial and you carefully note down that this is dr here not delta r okay delta r will come later uh, real force and real displacement will be real work uh, something that is quite familiar to you and you already know that and correspondingly we will write down for the virtual so delta w equal to f dot delta r that will be called the virtual work so which is real and which is uh, virtual now force is still real only that is real only displacement is virtual okay it is like you know uh, as if it is happening we will say that if that happens like that you can understand always saying not real means difficult right you have to use in your imagination imagination means suppose if that happens then what ha then what next like that you are asking the question and for that you are going to do some mathematical calculation and that calculation is what we say virtual work calculation that is how so now you see that uh, the small difference here this is dr and that is delta r uh, this is dw delta w but in both the cases the important point is that the applied force is real only so there is no confusion here uh, but we are going to disintegrate this force into two parts uh, one is the applied for uh, applied force and the second one is the invisible force uh, that is actually uh, making it constrained okay like a tension in the rope or tension in the string as an example okay so if that is clear now we will understand how the how to understand in terms of the generalized coordinates so this is something that is i have been explaining in the last two classes uh, so that there should not be any confusion now this is not now new for you last two classes we have seen this that uh, any kind of uh, real displacement in x direction y direction z direction uh, can be written down like this that is what is known as the generalized coordinate as a particular example we can say that r can be x r can be y r can be z that's the meaning and specifically if you are talking about the three dimensional uh, spherical polar coordinate system then that is a transformation so x is uh, connected by this relation y is connected by this relation because uh, you have already studied the spherical polar coordinate system and this comes purely from mathematics now what what you have to uh, connect or what kind of uh, connection that you have to do is the r will be the q1 the theta will be the q2 the phi will be the q3 and that's all to close the bracket 4 5 6 not there that is how you understand so once this is clear then uh, the similar thing we can write down for more number of variables and remember this also i explained in the uh, last class but for uh, because we are going to use this frequently so let me also explain the same thing how do you read this is x is a function of r theta phi that is what is the meaning y is a fun you have to write like this y is a function of r theta phi z is a function of r theta phi so that is how you have to read like this but there is a point to be noted here in the case of the z you see that phi is not there r cos theta is there but nothing is there for phi then how can you write like this that question comes the point to be noted here is that once you identify this is important once you identify how many number of configuration variables or we say that the generalized coordinates are there remember how many how many are there in this case three of them are there then all the three should be maintained in all the equation that is why i am writing phi here you should not say that the first one contains three variable second one contains three variable and the third one will contain two variable like that you cannot write you are supposed to not to write so here you don't have phi but that's okay even though you don't have phi it is a function of phi y means uh, you can think like this into phi to the power 0 so what is wrong in this r cos theta into phi you write a variable phi then to the power 0 then that is actually uh, meaningful so uh, what i am trying to say is that phi is present but it is invisible that is what i am trying to say we have to maintain that many number of variables in all our equations so that is important that is why we we are talking about the number of degrees of freedom once you say that 3 is the number of degrees of freedom 3 should be there everywhere until you finish your calculation 
okay some some terms will be visible because of its power can be zero or that it is multiplied by zero or so, something like that okay so this is one thing that that should be clear to you because we are going to take partial derivatives okay i am taking some time because uh, we have to perform partial derivatives so at that time uh, confusions will come and of course uh, time will be included depending on problem to problem uh, even though i have written the word optionally here i have written optionally what do you mean by that is uh, optionally means uh, it is not that you have a freedom of either writing or not it's not that's not the meaning the meaning is in some problems time will be explicitly present in some other problem time may not be present so either you have to include or you may not be including depending on uh, the problem to problem that is what i mean to say so uh, in that particular case what happens is you simply have to add a time so you you write down that r theta comma phi and t so like this you have to do so now it is a uh, uh, you have four variables so partial derivatives you have to take four of them that's why i am uh, insisting four partial derivatives will come uh, in the previous case r theta phi means only three partial derivatives will come so that is why this point you have to remember and of course uh, when we go to partial derivatives we will see but for the time being it's okay now we can proceed further and like that you can write for x y z etc okay so here even though r uh, yeah even though r is equal to this if you differentiate this then this is also a function of q1 q2 So what I am trying to say is here. What is that I want to tell you is, if R is a function of R means general one x y is at anything. If R is a function of q1 q2, that means uh, these are the generalized coordinates. Then if you differentiate this, then even after differentiation, they will be functions of the original q1 q2 up to qn. That's what I am insisting. You should not say that dr will be a function of dq1 dq2 etc. it's not like that so q1 will be q1 only so that will not change that is what i am trying to say and similarly in the case of the virtual work calculation delta r will also be a function of q1 q2 so when you are talking about functions of you try to maintain the original q1 q2 and only difference is that uh, only thing uh, depending upon whether it is real or virtual this delta will come but it is a function of q1 q2 so that function will be maintained with the original name you should not say that delta r will depend on delta q1 delta q2 like that you should not say so that's all and these things are required when you perform the partial derivatives and to understand uh, 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 what is this actually we are talking about uh, in the case of the virtual work calculation let us consider a trivial example i mean very simple and uh, so it, it will be quite trivial but this example is going to uh, demonstrate that we are going to separate the forces into two types so we are going to consider a particular uh, mass which is hanging uh, over a thread and as you can see that some heavy mass is there and this is uh, remember that the, we are using the word static uh, equilibrium so it is not at all moving that's a point okay now what are the forces acting on the system okay if you see uh, what are the uh, forces acting on the system the mg is acting vertically downward of course that is the external force uh, coming from the gravity so that is what you have to consider as applied force applied force is equivalent to as if you are applying okay instead of you applying nature is already applying that is what you have to understand in addition to mg you can apply any additional force if you want okay for simplicity let us consider one force like that then what happens is then a, a, a force called tension what is known as the actually it's a reaction force it is not we are not talking about any chemical reaction you say uh, people use the word normal reaction right normal reaction means normal is only perpendicular that is perpendicular reaction means opposite force that's all about it not chemical reaction so since mg is acting in the vertically downward direction uh, the opposite means it has to be vertically upward for that reason it is called reaction whether it is normal or tangential that depends on problem to problem if it is perpendicular you use the word normal that is why normal comes in our case it's not normal so it is along the uh, thread it is happening or we say that uh, we can call string or thread whatever it is now the point to be noted is that what i want what i would like to write down is that when you write an equation like this you see this is a familiar 
uh, the trivial, uh, quite simple thing that you know that. Under equilibrium condition, we say that the uh, all the upward forces, the summation of all the upward forces must be equal to the summation of all the downward forces. If you write like that, we say that uh, the, the condition for equilibrium is obtained and this is how you write. Okay. But now what I am trying to say is, let us identify the two forces, different varieties of forces. One force we are going to call by the name applied force. We are going to classify. That's why I am writing. We say Fa and another variety of force we are going to call by the name Fc is a force of constraint. Force which is generated or we say that force of constraint to maintain the constraint. Now this terminology is important because principle of virtual work and D. Lambert's principle, both of them will use these two terminologies. What is the, what's the terminology? Applied force, that is one. And the second one is constraint force. These two things will be there. So what is this constraint force? That's what I am trying to explain. Constraint force means it is a force that got generated into your dynamical system automatically in order to maintain the constraint. Maintain, maintaining means what? The constraint should not be broken. So what happens if the thread is cut? So after attaching the mass here, let us say 10 kilogram mass, after attaching the mass and releasing your hand, suppose if the thread is cut, then the entire thing will fall down and you don't have the equilibrium equation T equal to MT. You can't write like this, right? That is the meaning. So the, the thread should maintain in its original form. That means the constraint is maintained. Constraint is maintained means the length of the string or the length of the wire is maintained as it was original. So the, the, the time at which you are going to start the experiment and the time at which you are going to finish your experiment. During all the time, this length of the wire should be constant. That is what we say constraint, right? It should not elongate. If it is elastic situation, then okay, then constraint is not maintained. So maintaining the constraint means something will not come free for you. Nothing is free. So it will not maintain on its own. So for that, what happens is a force comes into picture automatically or naturally and we are going to call such a force as a constraint force. Constraint force means a force that appears in this system in order to maintain its con constraint. So this is one, one variety, applied force is another variety. So keeping this terminology, we are going to write down the principle of virtual work. Okay, so let me therefore go down in the screen and then write down. So this is the traditional way of writing that uh, in fact uh, writing down t equal to mg is okay uh, you say that upward equal to downward but uh, properly if you want to write mathematically in the vector notation you know that mg is acting vertically downward therefore it is acting in the negative y direction now how do you know that it is negative y direction means first of all you have to put the uh, you see first of all you have to uh, put the uh, what you call the coordinate system so you say that the uh, the horizontal line coming here would be the x axis and then the, the vertical uh, line that is going will be the y-axis. So only after fixing that, uh, we can now say that the, uh, the the mg that we have written is acting in the negative y direction. And then plus plus means the sum of the forces. Then any force that is acting here, we are going to call the tension. Tension is a force acting in the uh, positive x dire uh, y direction. Then that must be equal to zero. So this equal to zero is written that it must be zero for static equilibrium. So if it is the situation, then we can get this equation. So this is not the first equation that we get. This is how you write down. Then after simplifying, you get this. So this is the traditional. I, I am using the word, remember, traditional. So this is how you write traditional. Now we are going to move into another variety, what is known as virtual. So uh, you should be able to distinguish uh, two of the varieties. One is called a traditional way of writing. The other one is called virtual method of writing. These are the two methods. Finally, final achievement will be same. So this is a, something important. Uh, many times this question comes. So finally, what is that you are going to do with the virtual work method? Using the concept of the virtual work, what are you going to do? If, the, if that question comes, answer is whatever you are going to achieve by the traditional method. Traditional method means what? Uh, just now I have written this equation, right? 
the total forces acting on the particular system because it is vector no vectorial sum of all the forces must be equal to zero for uh, for equilibrium so that is a traditional method that traditional method whatever you are going to achieve same achievement only you can get it using the principle of virtual work so principle of virtual work will not give you anything more than that then the question comes if the principle of virtual work is not going to give you anything extra or anything over and above the traditional method then why do you want to learn this that question comes the answer is that the calculation is simple that is the reason calculation is simple means uh, you don't have to worry about uh, a lot of equations with vectors so totally i am talking about like this if you want to do one page of mathematics uh here you can do only three lines okay one page of mathematics and just writing down some three lines of mathematics is much more simple right in that way you can understand so principle of virtual work is something that is going to be useful in terms of simplifying the amount of mathematics that you have to do you can do little amount of mathematics and get the answer if you want to do the traditional method you have to or you already know the traditional method so i am not explaining that is what you do in the bsc you you say that the total a uh, vector sum of the all the forces should be equal to zero plus not only that in addition to that you say that the total moment moment means what equal and opposite equal and opposite forces will form a couple and uh, the couple multiplied by the delta theta will give you the moment so the moment means the rotational effect the total rotational effect uh, should be equal to zero if both of them are zero then you say equilibrium then you solve the problem these things are uh, quite familiar under your bsc so that methodology is the traditional method that requires a little more mathematics i mean algebraic mathematics you have to spend a little more time so our conclusion or the aim should be clear to you uh, do you now agree that virtual method has some advantage the answer is yes virtual method has an advantage in that the amount of mathematics one has to work out is little bit reduced therefore we are happy to take this virtual method uh, sorry virtual work method and so is the case for the d lambert's principle okay so the d lambert's principle is also similar configuration applied for the dynamic equilibrium and there is an advantage of this method once again that uh, the the principle of the d lambert's uh, method is enabling you or it is going to help you to derive or we establish the euler lagrange equation so lagrange equation of motion can be obtained from the principle of virtual work for dynamical system you got the point principle of work sorry virtual work for dynamical system that is what is known as the d lambert's principle okay so if that is the introduction uh, that, that i i would like to give for this then let us again uh, uh, once again come back to the two varieties i have written something in green color so you see that i am i am now classifying one uh, one set of forces under the name fa and another set of forces into fc c means constraint a means applied i use the word set of forces but i have written only one force here in our example we are taking only one force but you can consider any other example where multiple forces are present so if multiple forces are present you can classify one set of all forces will be applied force another set of all forces will be constrained force so that separation or segregation has to be done by you you have to tell which is the applied force and which is the constrained force okay if that is clear now so whatever i explain i'll write down fc means forces of constraint and fa means applied forces and remember as usual i already explained why i did i write yes here you can always consider any other system where multiple forces are present in the system so now you see that we are going to write down a simple uh, equation like this that the total force is now separated into two parts one is applied and another is constrained this is the equation that we are going to use in the principle of virtual work okay we'll we'll move uh, we'll move ahead and remember this equation f is equal to f applied plus f constrained that is important okay i'll move ahead to the next place and then let us see what is the meaning of this uh, virtual work here and in fact you know already know what is that we are calculating 
uh, when i am writing f dot delta r uh, you can easily understand that this is a dot product force uh, dot distance or displacement so it must be a work and this is what we call the virtual work and now the calculation is just uh, you know uh, in one line we are going to write down one statement saying that we are going to decompose the capital f into applied part and then a constraint part so like that we are going to one force is decomposed into two and let us write that f a plus f c then afterwards you have a dot delta r so because of the delta you don't have to worry delta is just a symbol used for the usual infinitesimal small displacement if you know what is dx you know what is dx right x is there if i differentiate i get dx this is also same thing this is also same dr only but as i already told you that the time freezing is there right freezing of time we are considering the displacement under the condition of frozen time time is frozen to 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 make you remember that time is frozen we are using the symbol delta so because of delta you don't have to uh, think that it is something uh, uh, not at all clear it is as simple as a dx dy dz that's all about it uh, only thing is that such a dx such a dy uh, they are calculated under frozen time that means time is not allowed or equivalently we, we say that mathematically assumed distance that is the meaning equivalently okay so let us now write down as a two separate uh, dot products f a dot delta r then plus you have f c dot delta r f c dot delta that looks very simple right so now you got two expression that is two works are there we started with one work here now you are having two work this is the work done by the applied forces work done by the constraint forces okay i am writing in green color zero one oh, why zero is coming here that is because we are talking about the we are talking about the equilibrium condition under statics so for static equilibrium condition it must be zero so there should not be any doubt on this for static equilibrium you already know that the total force is zero okay this is the second important concept i am writing i will explain after writing this okay so there are there are two there are two things that are to be noted here to understand this the first thing is that when a particular system is in static condition total force should be zero so if the total force is zero then what happens is f dot dr you are taking you understand what you are doing f dot dr total f is zero now that kind of uh, system is slightly displaced means that will be zero once again because of that reason this zero comes okay that is part one then second part of the discussion is this is critical this is very important what is the second discussion is that okay you have two work here so uh, one work due to applied force alone another work uh, done by the constraint force alone and if you are going to do the summation of all such things zero should be there for static equilibrium that is clear now but there is interesting thing there is an interesting thing what is interesting is in the case of the conservative mechanical systems in the case of the conservative mechanical systems now what is conservative system you already know there is nothing to worry about that uh, whenever the force is uh, expressible as the gradient of a scalar that is clear right electric field can be written as gradient of electric potential gravitational field or we say gravitational force can be written down as equal to the gradient of gravitational potential so these things are conservative opposite of conservative is dissipative dissipative system means something is having a friction if a frictional force is there then frictional force cannot be written as cannot be written as gradient of uh, scalar potential so therefore what happens is dissipative dissipative means the mechanical energy will not be conserved so mechanical energy will be transferred to or converted to heat energy it is not lost but it will be converted to heat energy but heat energy will not come back to mechanical energy for us so as far as uh, as far as a mechanical engineer is concerned that energy is wasted so in that way we say it is conservative or dissipative so therefore the important point is that if you are going to consider 
conservative mechanical systems that means all the forces are expressed as gradient of a scalar function in that case there is something special what is the special is that the constraint force dot delta r is zero did you get this particular point what i am trying to say is if you are considering conservative mechanical systems then fc dot delta r goes to zero that is interestingly it happens like that so that is the, that is where the principle of now this is what is the principle of virtual work well, what it means to say is that if the second term goes to zero then why do you want to unnecessarily add it it's already going to zero right that is how you ask the question this is already going to zero then you are adding multiple zeros isn't it so there is an applied force into displacement okay then plus you are calculating fc dot zero and then adding it that means what you are actually calculating zero and adding zero and adding like that you are doing so why do you want to unnecessarily you know complicate delete this because this is zero already so if you remove this term then what is left out so let us write down what is the left out term here so we are left out with only f a dot you remember you see the a is there that's important you have f a dot dr equal to zero under static equilibrium this is the principle of virtual work okay so ultimately what happened is because the fc term c, c means what a conserve c means what c means constraint and once again conservative so you can imagine like that it is applicable only for conservative system for dissipative system some extra work has to be done that i will tell later for conservative systems uh, this particular term is already going to zero it is happening we are not proving right now uh, but you can take some simple examples at the time i will tell you how this goes to zero in all the conservative system this term goes to zero so why do you want to unnecessarily add simply delete it after removing this term what happens is i will be getting only this particular term here so you simply copy that f a dot delta r that is equal to this zero is copied here so you are now removing or eliminating unnecessarily unnecessary steps so those extra calculation has gone now has disappeared so now uh, once you uh, once you write like this uh, this is the statement or this is the statement of the virtual work we will take up an example uh, in the next class of course but however uh, before taking an example in the next, next class i would like to tell you now that statement of the principle of virtual work means this is the statement the statement of the virtual work says that the the sum of the virtual work done by the applied forces should be equal to zero under equilibrium the word applied is very important if you forget the word applied it looks as if the traditional method traditional method means what sum of all the forces is equal to zero there's a small difference right sum of all the forces or sum of applied forces that difference is there if you say sum of applied forces then it is principle of virtual work if you say sum of all forces then it is the traditional method that you have done in your bsc okay if this is so this is the uh, the place where the confusions will be there and now hopefully uh, the word virtual you 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 might have understood uh, how the word virtual is uh, meaningful now and in the next class i would like to take up an example problem and then we will see uh, how some of the terms are going to zero uh, as i already told you and in addition i will also explain uh, how to solve the problem by only considering applied forces so that part i will do in the next class okay